Welcome to Crash Shop. Brad here. Today I am saying goodbye to my favorite mallet. I want to be remaking it though. This thing has served me well the last few years, but it's fallen apart and I'm going to try to remake it exactly the way it was. All right, so my handle is still intact, but I think I'm going to make my own handle. The woods I'm going to be using for this project are oak and maple. All right, so I want to make sure that I have the end grain of the wood to the end of the hammer. It'll absorb a blow a lot better. So let me go ahead and rip this oak down to the height of the current head. Let me get that ripped down and then I'll move on to what I'm going to do with the maple. So I've marked the width of my hammerhead. I'm gonna go ahead and make two cuts to uh, that length. All right, so I've got my two pieces of oak cut and they just about match the size of the face of this mallet head. So I'm gonna put these up on top of another piece of wood. This is maple and you can see this matches my height perfectly. So this is going to be the next piece of wood that I use. I'll use this in between so I have a little bit of a contrast on the outside. And I'm gonna cut this into two pieces rather than having to drill a hole because it's difficult unless you have a mortiser to do a square hole. So let me get a rough estimate and it's all right if I cut a little bit too much because it'll just hang on the outside. I think I'll cut a couple pieces to about that length right there. All right, you can see I've got all my pieces cut out here, my two pieces of oak and my two pieces of maple. So this is kind of gonna be the way that it fits together. So you have that little bit of a gap just like on the original head. But the hole is tapered in the head that way uh, this tapered handle kind of has a friction fit on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is kind of taper my, uh, or angle my pieces of maple, but I'm gonna go off of reference with this first handle because I am just going to kind of trace this handle out and cut the exact same handle. I could reuse it probably, but I kind of want to make my own. So this will all be getting glued together kind of like that. So let me go ahead and make some marks so I know where to glue it. All right, so I've got my lines drawn. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these up and I'm just gonna butt these right up to those lines. All right, so we've got the maple glued up to that oak. I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit and then I'm gonna do the top piece. The reason I'm not doing it all together is because I wanna be able to see the maple and make sure it's not shifting off of that line at all. We'll give that some time and then we'll throw the other one on. All right, so while I wait for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and take my old handle, trace it onto a new piece of wood. This is oak. We'll take it to the miter saw, cut it to size. It's already a good width. And then um, I'll take it to the band saw I'll make it a little bit more ergonomic. All right, so I just ended up leaving this overnight. 
and the glue should all be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the top piece on. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me, pretty seamless. All right, we'll throw a little bit of glue on here. And I'm using Type Bond Ultimate. All right, looks good. Line this up the best we can. This is overlapping a little bit on each side over the maple, and that's fine. I'm gonna be scoring up the ends anyway, so that was pretty good. Let's get the clamps on. All right, that's looking all good. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this overnight. I'll be in tomorrow to finish it up and throw the handle in. All right, this is all glued up. I'm back on the next day, so I'm gonna take these clamps off and see what we got. All right, I'm really happy with the results of this glue up. Uh, I've got some nice seamless edges, so let's go ahead and clean this up, score up the edges and get them all flush. I've got the top and the bottom cut nice and flush. So before I cut the sides, I wanna go ahead and measure from each side of the hole. I wanna make sure that one side isn't way shorter than the other. So let's see how much space I'm working with here. I can go about an inch and a half on this side. And yep, it looks like I'm gonna be doing about an inch and a half over from the hole. All right, I've got my marks here for the miter cuts. And I've adjusted my saw about five degrees so that I have a little bit of a taper on the, uh, the striking faces. So the next thing I'm gonna do is round over these edges because these are the striking faces and every time I hit, you know, if I get an angled hit, I don't wanna have any chip out. So a rounded corner or even a chamfer would be nice. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and round these over a little bit just by hand on, uh, on my belt sander. All right, so this is looking pretty sweet and I'm very happy with the results so far. Check it out. I've got the corners and the edges all rounded over on the belt sander. And it looks like I've got a little bit of glue on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap that out with a chisel. All is good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just hand sand it a little bit. This is just 100 grit. All right, it's handle shaping time. All right, I've got both of my pieces basically completely roughed out. Right now I'm just sanding them to about 320 to give them a little bit of a smoother finish. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. The test fit, let's see if this works. In from the top. Oh, that's nice and snug. Ooh, that's seated really, really well. Take a look at that. I am very happy with this one. Take a look at how tight that fit is. That is so tight. I can see little gaps at the corners, but that's just about it. This is a very tight fit, and I'm very happy with the results on this one. This is a good looking mallet, and this will serve me well for years. All right, I'm using boiled linseed oil, my favorite. All right, let's see if we can get that grain to pop a little bit. Wow, that's looking really nice.
Okay, let's take this apart and get it all oiled. Now I'm just gonna throw a little bit of oil on this thing. I'm not gonna go overboard like I would on an ax handle because this isn't gonna be out in the elements. This is just gonna be in the shop and that little bit of oil will help give it a good pop, give it a good look and uh, help protect the outer, the outer portion of the wood. Look at that, it clicks right into place. All right, just so you know, boiled linseed rags are known to spontaneously combust. It's never happened to me, but I have seen it happen online a hundred times, so be careful where you put these. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is a very fun build to do, and I highly recommend it. Whether you're just getting into woodworking or you've been doing it for a long time, this is a good project for everyone because it can be as simple as you want it to be, or you can get very complicated with it. You can try different types of wood, you can run an accent strip down the handle. The possibilities are endless with this. And this is a project that really is gonna pay off because now I've got one more tool in the shop and who doesn't like tools? You know, I've got something else I can use now to make other things. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.